This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1605, 10 Ways to Invest Without the Stock Market, part two, by Kaylin Bruce of freedomsprout.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I read to you from the best personal finance blogs on the web, with the author's permission, of course. Now, today's post is a continuation from yesterday. So if you're new here, I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. But if you're all caught up, let's hear part two and continue optimizing your life. 10 Ways to Invest Without the Stock Market, part two, by Kaylin Bruce of freedomsprout.com. If you don't recall from yesterday, number one on the list was hard assets. Now let's jump into the other nine ways to invest without the stock market. Number two, bonds. When you invest in bonds, you're investing in debt. That may not sound pretty, but it's a legitimate investment. In Your Money or Your Life, Robin and Dominguez go into depth about how investing in bonds help them into early retirement. I'm not a big fan of buying bonds straight from the government or from companies themselves because it can be difficult and it's typically more of a manual process. But you're in luck because Vanguard and many other companies offer great bond funds. Here are some of my favorites. Vanguard Long-Term Treasury Index Fund. Vanguard Intermediate Term Bond Index Fund. Vanguard High Yield Tax Exempt Fund. Out of those three, we are invested in the High Yield Tax Exempt Fund. And yes, if it's not obvious, I prefer Vanguard. Based on the low fees and excessive options, they are simply the best. Number three, inventions. Angel investing is the main way to find good invention ideas or just talk to people you know. You might only be a couple degrees of separation from an inventor who's looking for investors. When you hear of a good Kickstarter fund for an invention, contact the inventors and ask them if they have investment opportunities. It could be anything from a new device to a board game. I have a friend who invests solely in inventions and it's worked well for him. It takes some research and a lot of time, but it could pay dividends. Number four, real estate. Real estate will always be worth something. Everyone has to live somewhere. You can invest in rental properties that will produce an income, or you can buy raw land in hopes that it will increase in value. Just keep an eye on your taxes and make sure to pay them. Commercial real estate is another option, but do your research first. If you're going to get into real estate, I suggest heading over to the best real estate blog on the internet, Bigger Pockets. I promise you'll find the answers to all of your questions. Number five, small business. It's true that most small businesses end up failing. In fact, quote, 20% of small businesses fail in their first year, 30% of small businesses fail in their second year, and 50% of small businesses fail after five years in business. Finally, 70% of small business owners fail in their 10th year of business, end quote. But if you really know of a groundbreaking local business, it's worth a shot. You know the local market better than outsiders. Use that to your advantage. If you think you've found the next Apple, you could be in for some big returns. Of course, you could also lose everything you invest. Greater rewards come through greater risks. Number six, peer-to-peer lending. You can loan money to your brother-in-law and tell him to pay it back with interest. However, that may be the last time you ever see your money or your brother-in-law. Fortunately, there are ways to take advantage of peer-to-peer lending with less risk and without lending to people you know. Lending Club and Prosper are two of the most popular options, and they offer quite a bit of protection. Similar to the protection of a mutual fund, they will spread your investment across many different peers so you're not lending your money to one person. Number seven, collectibles. Sports cards, stamps, model cars, almost anything is collectible if you can find a buyer and if you can keep it in mint condition. This is more of a hobby than anything, so you wanna be sure you're interested in whatever you're collecting. But remember, for collectibles without a buyer, it doesn't matter what it's worth. Use that to your benefit when you're buying collectibles and you'll have an easier time selling them down the road. Often, due to how long it takes for some collectibles to become valuable, consider leaving this as a legacy to your children, possibly even for their children. But be careful not to leave a bunch of junk your children will have to store just because you saw it as a collectible. Number eight, antiques and art. Similar to other collectibles, antiques and art are only worth what someone will pay. However, there's a large market for both of these things. 
The most important thing here is to do your research. A well-researched buy can outperform the stock market any day. An uninformed buy can be the biggest burden on your portfolio. There's a lot of information out there to start investing in antiques and art. Number nine, wine. It's actually possible to make between 6 and 15% annually by investing in wine. You need to know a lot about wine, such as which wines are worth the most and how to store it properly and where to buy it, but this investment can definitely pay off. Of course, you need to make sure you're not going to be tempted to drink it all. Number 10, farming. This can go one of two ways. It can either be a lifestyle investment by buying and working a farm yourself, or it can be a capital-only investment by owning a farm that's run by someone else. You'll usually have to go in and get the process started yourself, but it can be a profitable investment once it's up and running. Remember, this is one of the alternate investment options Warren Buffett uses. It doesn't end there. These aren't your only options. Of course, you can always put your money in a high yield savings account or invest in a CD, which is a certificate of deposit, but the rates of return are so low. It's not much of an investment. There's also Forex and cryptocurrency, but both of those take a lot of research and too often end poorly, so be careful. That's why I didn't put them on the list, but they are options. If you're just looking to get out of the US stock market, There are plenty of stable foreign stock exchanges, but again, those exchanges are still affected heavily by the US stock market. It's great to invest outside the stock market for diversity's sake, but not for worry's sake. You just listened to part two of the post titled 10 Ways to Invest Without the Stock Market by Kaylin Bruce of freedomsprout.com. Okay, guys, I have to admit, this was a tough list for me. If your reason for wanting to invest outside the stock market is due to the risk of losing money, most of these alternatives are even riskier in my opinion, especially the idea of investing in collectibles. I would look at this as much more of a hobby versus a real way to build wealth. Consider all the people who thought Beanie Babies were a good investment. As I mentioned yesterday, I'll be adding bonds to my portfolio eventually for the purposes of smoothing out volatility while I'm drawing down from my portfolio. But the only other option I personally would consider from this list is real estate. The reason why I've been more cautious about investing in rental properties is that it requires a lot more work than investing in stocks and bonds. You don't need to worry about replacing the roof or problem tenants when you're investing in the market. There's also a much higher barrier to entry in owning real estate than investing in the stock market and much higher costs of buying and selling that can eat into overall returns. That means for those that are just starting out, it generally makes more sense to start with basic stock market investing and plan to buy property later. I think the options on this list seem fun and interesting, but would require discipline and time to do extensive research and due diligence. I'm not sure they're an adequate replacement to stock market investing for most of us. And that's another episode and weekend of Optimal Finance Daily in the books. Thank you for your support and for listening every day. I'll be back with more posts for you on Monday. So have a great rest of your weekend and I'll catch you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.